Time now for campus craziness, and tonight the title is not an overstatement, it really is crazy. Consider Evergreen State College in Washington and Olympia. Every year the school holds a day in absence. In years past, non-white non students symbolically left campus and attended anti-racism events. This year, student activists demanded that all white people leave campus or else. Brett Weinstein refused. He's a professor at Evergreen State, and he called the race-based demand, quote, a show of force and an act of oppression. In response to that, here's what happened. This is not about you. I'm talking we are not about this. It's all about terms, him. No, on terms of white privilege. This is not a discussion. You have lost that one. You said some racist. I did apologize? not. I did it's not. It's okay. not telling people of color the useless. You're useless. Get the History could pivot in the direction of the values that you are standing here for. Yeah, resign. What? Resign. <laughs> wow. Professor Brett Weinstein joins us now. Professor, first of all, thank you for coming on. That looks like something, you know, out of Nom Pen 1975. Was that, I mean, what exactly was going on there? What happened? Well, uh, what happened is that 50 or so students decided to disrupt the class that I was holding that morning and demand my resignation. Because you wouldn't leave campus because you're white? Uh, well, they imagine that I am a racist and that I am teaching racism in the classroom and uh, that has caused them to imagine that I have no right to speak, that I'm harming students by the very act of teaching them. What happened after the video cut out? Well, that's an interesting story. The, um, the campus police apparently showed up outside of the classroom. Uh, the protesters then blocked their entrance. They, uh, I did not call the police. Someone else called the police, and they were concerned for my safety. But when they tried to come into the building to make sure that I was okay, the protesters blocked them, and because um, the issue of policing is so sensitive at the moment. The police had to run around and find another entrance to the building to get inside and check with me. Uh, at the point they did that, the protesters moved on and uh, corralled the president of the college uh, at his office. They extracted some demands from him. Among the demands was that there would be a uh, a meeting, well actually demands is perhaps the wrong word, a concession, that there would be a meeting at four o'clock in uh, a large room on top of our library building. Uh, so um, that meeting took place at the end of the day and believe it or not, it was far crazier than the video that you just showed. Th this whole story is so over the top that it, even though we do a lot of these, it's hard for me to believe it's real. So the, the core demand is that all people of your skin color leave the campus. Your president is a guy called George Bridges. Where George was Bridges. he? Why isn't, there he is right there, Why, George Bridges is supposed to be running this school. Why is he allowing mo a mob to threaten one of his professors? Well, I must say, um, I have some concern that the story is so strange that it's not even going to make sense to an audience that isn't local to the campus. Um, Dr. Bridges is allowing this mob to effectively control the campus and uh, they have been in control since 9.30 on Tuesday morning. Uh, at this moment, I believe Dr. Bridges is answering a set of demands put forward by the protesters, um, and they have said that if he, does not, uh, if he does not accept their demands, that there will be violence. I do not know what his response to those demands is going to be, but I know that that's taking place at this hour. He is also told the police to stand down. So although the campus police have a sense of what it is that needs to happen in a circumstance like this, they have been hobbled by the fact that they answer to the college administration and in fact for several days have been barricaded in the campus police station. Oh my gosh, this is like something out of another country. I, I, it's just hard to believe any of this is real. And just. Our, our viewers should look this up online because there's there are a lot of pieces to the story. It's hard to convey on television, but you had this, I thought, powerful line in your letter. And I assume you're no kind of right winger. If you teach at Evergreen, I'm sure you're, you know, a Hillary voter. But you had this, you had this. No, line. no, not a not a Hillary voter. I'm a I'm a I'm a deeply progressive person. Um, and oh, okay. I must say, so, I'm. There you go. go I'm, 
I'm troubled by what this implies about the current state of the left. Well, you think? You said people shouldn't be allowed to speak or not on the basis of their skin color, which seems like a foundational belief of the left, and one that I agree with strongly. And for that, they physically threatened you and are trying to get you fired. This is uh, unbelievable. Yes, they're, they are absolutely trying to get me fired, and they believe that um, my words in my email are transparently racist. And I think we're caught quite off guard when people who were not at Evergreen read my letter and couldn't find any racism in it. Well, yeah, just the, just the opposite. Professor, Godspeed to you, and I hope you'll come back with an update on this story because it's really one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Thank you.